Good morning. Welcome to Rock Spring Church Online. I am so glad that you tuned in to hear what God has to say this morning. In just a minute, I'm going to be sharing with you something so exciting about how to reposition yourself to be certain you don't miss out on God's blessing. Stick with us. Until then, enjoy the worship. Wait, 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 wait. You forgot to tell everybody to tune in next Sunday, which is Mother's Day, because I'll be preaching a girl preaching on Mother's Day. You don't want to miss it. It'll be awesome. Josh is going to be uh, singing, and I can't wait to hear him. Uh, I don't think this is the right camera. Am I looking? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, we'll see you next Sunday. This song, you know, is a, is a worship song, Endless Alleluia, um, joined with the angels singing. I mean, this is, this, is, um, this is important. We have the ability to enter into a throne room with our Heavenly Father. And if you're going through a tough time right now, I just encourage you to pick up the Bible, get on your knees, cry, say, God, I'm here. Uh, find a quiet place to unplug with him. And um, in that, we will find, I believe, what we're really looking for. So I just want to encourage you guys as we continue to worship together. In the moments where you go 
sing this with me. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children.
Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Justin, and this is my wife, Melissa. We're so happy that you're joining us this morning for worship. I know that we're not here meeting together physically, but God is still moving in the church. The mission and vision of Rock Spring Church is still happening, building community through loving Christ and loving others. There are those that are part of our church that are feeding the hungry, caring for widows and orphans, and whatever other needs arise during these uncertain times. While you're watching today, we really want to hear from you. Feel free to comment and to throw up an emoji or two. We'd also like to know how to pray for you. Visit www.rockspring.net and click contact us to send out your prayer request. You can also let us know of any decisions you've made or to call us and tell us about your story. If you'd like to support Rock Spring today, you can do so by texting the word GIVE to 304-202-7046 or visit our website at www.rockspring.net forward slash give. Enjoy the service. so glad you stuck around. This is so exciting because I believe God created you and I to be blessed. We've just gotten out of position, and I'm going to pick back up where our favorite cop, Pastor Ben, left off last week with the question, have you assumed the position? See, we've all gotten out of position, and God wants us to reposition ourselves so that He can do what He created us to do, which is to receive His blessings. We're all separated from God by sin. And when we come to Him in a relationship with Jesus Christ, we're repositioning ourselves so that we can receive forgiveness of sin. That is absolutely the greatest blessing you will ever receive from God. But here's the thing. It's not the only blessing He has for you. God created you to receive so much more. But because of sin, and even after the forgiveness of sin, we have to assume the position or reposition ourselves so that we can be where God wants us to be. Now, the thing about that is we have to adjust our attitude, our posture. Ben told us that God will bless us not for who we pretend to be, but who we were created to be. You were created in the image of God. You were created to be a blessor and to receive blessing. Listen to this verse from Acts 20, verse 35. For we must always cherish the words of our Lord Jesus, who taught giving brings far greater blessing than receiving. What's your attitude when you hear those words? See, for a lot of years, when I heard that, that is more blessed to give than to receive, my attitude was, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, I can't give, I don't have enough. My attitude was bad, I didn't posture myself, but we have to adjust our attitude, we have to readjust our posture, we have to become what we were created to be so that we can receive what we were created to receive. See, I can be just as selfish as anyone. I know that's hard to believe, but just ask my wife, Kathy. I don't immediately want to give, not only to my family, but especially to people that I don't know. I have to posture myself. When it comes to those that I love, when, when I come home at night and Kathy wants to watch a romantic movie, I'd prefer to watch an action flick. I'd prefer to watch war movies and Westerns, and but she wants to sit with me and she wants to relate to me. I have to posture myself. 
but that take, takes a change in attitude. How about house stuff? We've all been stuck because of COVID-19. We've all been cooped up together in houses. And I came home the other day and I've been working on the fence in the backyard. And Kathy shared with me that she had found some a great deal on some patio furniture. And I was like, wait a minute, that's not in the budget. I We can't go there. I haven't finished the fence. Or when grandkids come over and they want to spend time and I have a project going on, or even when my dog Bentley wants to take a walk, I'm not always ready to give them the things that they want. I have to choose to adjust my attitude. I have to choose what posture am I going to have? Am I, am I, are they going to know that my attitude is bad? Because if I do that, it ruins relationships. See, if we want relationships to soar, attitude is everything. When it comes to God's blessings, attitude determines altitude. Here's the truth. How high you go with the blessings that you receive from God will be determined by how you posture yourself. Attitude determines altitude. See, you and I were created to do this one thing, one word. Take a look at it with me right now. Simple word. We're all familiar with it, but you were created to share. I've got kids. I've got grandkids. None of them want to share. Can I get an amen? Truth is now, I still don't want to always share. I have to choose to do that. But here's the thing. We were created to share. We were created in the image of God, who is the great giver. Adam and Eve were blessed. They were blessed. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. You know what God was really saying to them? I created you and I've blessed you. Now be fruitful and multiply. Build up, populate the world and share. Allow me, God, to share the blessings with more than just the two of you. So I've given you a purpose. You are to reproduce and fill the earth. Why? So that God can share his blessings with more. See, to remain in the position of blessing, you and I must be the source. We must become the source of blessing for other people. Um, My favorite candy, M&M's. I'll have my grandkids or or neighbor kids come over, and I'm sure you've done this too. If I can get this open here, I will want to bless them with some candy. So I'll ask them to hold out their hand, and I'll, I'll pour the candy into their hand. And what do they do? They quickly just clench it. They hold it. But I've got more to give them. And here's the thing. For me to be able to give them more, guess what they have to do with what's in their hand? They either have to use it for themselves or they have to share it with others. And you know this about M&Ms if you've ever had them. If you don't use them or if you don't share them, what happens to them the longer you hold them? See, they say they melt in your mouth, not in your hands. But I can promise you this. You hold them in your hand long enough, they become ruined. You know that blessings are just like that? That that when we hold on to our blessings too long, they can become ruined. And God doesn't want that. He wants us to use them either for ourselves or for others. You and I were created to share. We can't receive more without releasing what we already have. And if we hold on it too long, we ruin it. See, I believe that I've spent a lot of my life missing out on the blessings that God has had for me. Because when it came to sharing with others or using it myself, I saw giving it or using it as a loss. When the reality of it is, it was given to me to bless me and to bless others. And God was standing right there with an, with more M&Ms ready to pour them into my hand. He's ready to do the same thing with you. Take a look at this story with me from Matthew 25. And you may be familiar 
to you. It may, you may have heard of it as referred to as the parable of the talents, where there was a master who had three servants. And the master was going away, but he wanted his business to continue on. And so he came, as the story goes in Matthew 25, to his servants, and he gave one a bag, five bags of gold. He gave to the second servant two bags of gold, and he gave to the third servant one bag of gold. And the master went away, and the servants had to decide what they were going to do with what had been placed into their hands. As the story goes, the master was gone for some time, and the first servant took the five bags that he had received, and he went out and he invested it. He made it work. Likewise, the second servant took what he had, the two bags that he had been given, and he took it out and he made it work, and he reproduced another two bags. See, a lot of times when we read this story, we think it's about the amount that was given, and it's really not, because the first servant received five bags, the second servant received two bags, the first servant went out and doubled what he had been given, the second servant went out and doubled what he had been given, and when the master came back, he asked them how they had done, and they shared that. And here's what the master said to them. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. Now I will put you in charge of many things. Here's the most amazing thing. After he said that, he said this to them. Now come and share in your master's happiness. What greater blessing can there be for any of us than to hear those words from God? Well done, good and faithful servant. Now come and share in my happiness. So the first servant and the second servant, though they were given different amounts to work with, both received the same praise and both received the same blessing. But look at what the third servant did. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came and said, Master, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid. I went and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. So follow this story for a second. He doesn't rob his master. He doesn't try to use it for himself. He takes what is given to him, and instead of considering what his master wanted him to do with it, he simply wanted to protect what had been given to him. So he took it and hid it and did nothing with it. Yes, he had what was given to him when the master returned, but listen to the words of what his master said. The master replied, You wicked lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and I gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with bankers so that when I had returned, I would have at least received interest. So he took the bag of gold from him and gave it to the one who now had 10 bags for whoever has, has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. And whoever does not have, even what they do have will be taken from them. See, here's the thing. When we look about and we talk about God's blessing and that we were created to be blessed, but we were also created to be a blessing, what we have to come to understand is not only do we need to receive the blessing of forgiveness of sins, we need to reposition ourselves so that we can receive further blessings from God. What is it that God wants us to do with the things that He has given us? How does He want us to use it? Here's the question for you this morning. Is it possible 
that the amount of blessings that you feel you are receiving from God now are the result of living in fear or focusing on the feeling that comes with being blessed because it feels good. Are you focusing on those two things or are you focusing on your purpose? Because again, as Pastor Ben said, God won't bless you for who you pretend to be. He'll bless you for who you were created to be. And you were created to receive blessing and give blessing. I think it's time that we reposition ourselves. How about you? It's what the third person didn't do. The third servant didn't do. He allowed fear of loss to keep him from receiving the praise and the blessing that the other two servants received. See, fear of loss sets you up for loss. Here's the thing. If we want to overcome our fear, we can't just pray it away. What I've discovered about God is this. I can pray and ask God to help me forgive someone or to help me overcome my fear or to help me not be jealous of someone else. And, and here's, the, here's the common thread that I have discovered, that when I pray for those things, my Heavenly Father doesn't just snap His fingers and magically give those things to me. Here's what He does. He gives me opportunities to work and to overcome those things. See, if you want to lose your fear of loss, God will give you opportunities to be generous to other people. If you don't overcome that fear, as the third servant, we suffer loss. If you push through and you overcome those fears, then God is ready, willing, and able to pour more M&Ms into your hand. He's ready, willing, and able to stand there and do what He always has wanted to do because it's the nature of God to do it, and that is to bless you. To say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come and share in your master's happiness. No greater place to be than beside God being invited to share in His happiness. That's the nature of God. We must fight to reposition ourselves. It begins with the want to, but then when the opportunity presents itself, we have to push through to do that. That verse we started out with, it is better to give than to receive. What's your attitude? What's your position? What's your posture when you hear that verse? Are you curious enough now when you listen to those words of Jesus Christ to go out and find someone to bless? Can you trust Jesus enough to prove himself? See, I can't prove Jesus to you but I believe he's more than willing to prove himself to you. That when you push through as the first two servants did and you do what the master wants you to do, he'll prove himself by turning what you're blessing in others for back on you. And the blessing you receive will be greater you may have noticed this glass sitting here the whole time that I've been speaking to you. It's one of my favorite summer drinks, iced tea. Now, this glass is either half full or half empty. When your glass gets like this glass, do you begin to think, wow, it's almost gone. I don't know where I'll get anymore. Or can you reposition your thoughts to believe that, you know what? When I have finished this, what I have actually done is made room for God to refill 
and restore. That's a change in attitude, isn't it? But here's the good news. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to take my word for it. We have the word of God that tells us this. And before I go to this last verse, just let me say this. What I've been sharing with you today, it's not about a method of getting more. It's not about a way to manipulate God. It's about living in blessing the way God created us to live. It is about receiving, and receiving from God does feel good, but it's also about blessing other people and being part of the image of God. Listen to the words of Jesus Christ from Luke 6, 38. Jesus says this, Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and poured out in your lap. Because with the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. Again, this is a change of attitude. It's a choice of repositioning ourselves, of evaluating our posture. Do we believe God or do we draw back? Do we try to hold on to what we already have or are we willing to bless other people and put God to the test? I've discovered that he's dependable. He hasn't failed us yet and he never will. I pray that you too will assume the position (laughs) that you will become what God created you to be, that you'll not only pursue the blessings of God because they feel good, but you'll also bear the image of God in being a blesser. Let me pray for you right now at your home. Just bow your heads wherever you are, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're doing. Just take this moment and quietly turn your thoughts toward God, as I pray with you and for you. So Heavenly Father, we come to you. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for today. We thank you that you are the great blesser. Father, I pray right now for every person whose minds and thoughts are turned toward you and that you will help them to enjoy the feeling of being blessed, but not get stuck with that, to move beyond the feeling of being blessed to the great feelings and the great blessing that comes when we become the blessor, that when we turn our thoughts toward others, God, you haven't failed us and you'll never fail us. So give us that power, give us that courage as we become motivated to assume the position. But then God, you show up as only you can, to prove who you are to each and every willing person who takes this truth and puts it to action. Man, I'm so glad you guys hung out with us today. Now go out and do the work and just wait for God to show up and give you the biggest blessings that you'll ever receive. We'll see you next week.